Well, James Wan promised right. <laughs> he did. <laughs> Malignant was not going to be anything we've seen from him before. I mean, maybe. I don't know. Is that debatable? Has he made a horror movie like this before? Eh, not really, since I don't think Dead Silence was even that good because it was terrible. It could Dead Silence could have been this. Like if Dead Silence had the same tone as this movie, I think that movie would have been better, probably. <laughs> but James Bond was right, and oh man. <laughs> I love the shit out of this movie. <laughs> Salutations everyone, I'm Nier Vikoshi, and welcome to another Nieru at the Movies. Tonight's special film today comes from James Wan, the man who has made the Saw franchise and has created the Conjuring series and the Insidious series as well, as well as he also directed movies that weren't horror, like uh, Dead Sentence with Kevin Bacon, where he just wanted to make a Death Wish-style revenge movie with Kevin Bacon. Uh, he made Furious 7 the in the Fast and Furious franchise. He made that. He also has made Aquaman, a movie that was actually not that bad, and he actually made a pretty good movie uh, since he said he wanted, he was offered The Flash, but he said he wanted to do Aquaman because he wanted a challenge with making a movie like Aquaman. He wanted to challenge himself to see how am I going to make underwater fight scenes look cool and not like those boring ones as you see in other movies. And he has achieved that. And he did a great job with that with Aquaman. In fact, he filmed pretty cool action scenes in Aquaman. And in The Malignant, you can see those directioning styles that he did in Aquaman and other films he's done. But also taking elements of other directional styles and camera shots from other directors as well in this film. And... It's really pretty cool what he's done with this film. Malignant is a horror movie about a woman named... Uh, Ma I forgot her name already. I only remember the her original name, which was Emily. But uh, she, was, she is currently pregnant with a baby. Probably her third or fourth baby this time because she had a lot of miscarriages. She also has an abusive husband boyfriend or something big shock <laughs> terrible I, I really hate that cliche oh no i'm staying with a man but i bet he could change because he's good and but he's so abusive and this boyfriend hits her in in the head well she slams her against the wall which hit her head and she starts bleeding a lot and this husband or boyfriend was like thinking that he made a mistake and he promises to change, which I found bullshit. I honestly was gonna get mad. I was so tempted to turn off the movie the moment uh, I saw this like, oh look, an abusive relationship, blah, blah, blah. Cause I felt like it was gonna go a predictable route that I was gonna get angry at. But then the movie quickly kind of wins me back honestly after like the first kill happens and it's clearly obvious the abusive boyfriend gets killed off first but he gets killed off and uh uh and emily goes in and tries to figure out who killed him but then she sees the person that's coming after her and tries to hurt her and she runs away and then she loses another baby again, sadly. And this is our story. And you would think, is it a haunted house uh, movie? No, it's not. At first, it feels like that. At first, it feels like, oh, this is probably 
a paranormal monster kind of movie like they awakened an evil spirit but no the movie does take a different direction to where it goes to the point it becomes kind of a slasher film at this point but also with a supernatural twist added to it uh which i liked there was one shot in this movie that i enjoyed where she was getting chased by this evil creature that's like walking towards her like he's the fucking uh grud like the like the grudge like kayako from the grudge movies and just like crawling up but then it doesn't show the 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 whole the horror antagonist of the film yet they show him uh through his perspective and they do this evil dead style camera shot where he where he, where they show her getting chased and i really loved that i was like oh shit nice evil dead and it was the only time that shot happens in the movie but it was well but it was well done it didn't want to steal it they just paid a little bit of homage to it in this film and they did a pretty good job mimicking the style pretty accurately to Sam Raimi's films. And as the moment that shot happened, it should have took me a long time to guess what kind of movie this is. So yeah, spoilers are in effect on this. I'm not going to uh, hold back. Well, maybe I will. Maybe I'll tell you what kind of movie this is, or maybe not. I don't know, but I would probably get spoilers. So maybe I will start to not restrain myself. So if you haven't seen the movie yet, go watch it. It's really good. I promise you won't be disappointed, but it depends on your preference of horror movie, honestly. Like this, this right here is a warning. It is depending on your preference of horror movie because... I'm going to be honest straight up. This movie is probably not going to scare you. Like it's probably not. That is all. Okay, let's get on to talking about the movie. This movie reminds me of Drag Me to Hell. Drag Me to Hell or any horror movie that Sam Raimi has done in the past that he's directed a long time like Evil Dead, mainly the the first like two sequels of the Evil Dead movies. Mainly Evil Dead 2, because Army of Darkness goes more fantasy and comedy. But this takes back to form of when Sam Raimi used to do horror movies a lot. And I think the last movie that he did that was horror, but also campy at the same time, was Drag Me to Hell. Sam Raimi has been a director that wants to do more than just other movies that isn't the same as what he usually does. He's done a film, a drama film called Simple Plan, which I never saw, but I guess no one liked that movie, even though I guess he put his heart and soul into that one. But this, you know, he has been one to tackle a lot more films that were different to horror, like trying out superhero movies when he did the Spider-Man trilogy, or like trying out Disney movies when he did Oz, The Great and Powerful. You can say Sam Raimi is not technically a one-trick pony when it comes to like movies. He do he does want to try out like different types of films that aren't just horror, that aren't just, you know, other things. Like he just wants to do something different every time. Like he doesn't just do horror, which shows the guy is talented in doing other stuff and you know he doesn't want to be bored of the same thing over and over again. Which is cool. I admire that in a man. And James Wan seems to love Sam Raimi kind of like campy horror. And he does it perfectly in this. Like I feel like he might have taken inspiration with Evil Dead 2 where he has to make it very terrifying, very horrific and gory. But also make it campy and silly at the same time also. Like, not to the point where it's like you start to roll your eyes like this is stupid, but the point where you're like laughing at the stuff because it's put in a serious looking tone of a movie of how they said things, how they describe things. Like, 
one line in the movie where they find out uh, who the, the killer is. And one of the detectives is like, I'm sorry, what? Like, but not like that. She says, she says it like, wait, the killer is like your imaginary friend. Like, like even the cop is like thinking, wait, what the fuck? How are you taking this shit seriously of what you're saying? <laughs> and she just, because Emily believes that an imaginary friend is telling her all this awful shit to do, all this terrible things that, uh, that tell her to kill basically like her mother's unborn kid, which she luckily hasn't done. And also telling her to do a lot of awful things and pretends to be nice to her, which she tries to block out in her head that her imaginary friend doesn't freaking exist, which she starts to realize he actually does. And it's kind of odd. And you start to think like, what's the, what's the, twist what's the uh shocking uh reveal that uh who this gabriel is and i was like watching this trying to think why go after this person why go after her because the beginning of the movie starts off with this gabriel uh being in a in a like meant in like a hospital like a hospital to help cure like children or do surgeries on them to help them get rid of like cancer or like a tumor or something on their head to help perfect them or help to change their appearance. And they, sh they show this in the movie early on, but they don't show who it is that what this creature does look like. But you could see through this like creepy, like behind this sheet and you can see like this evil creature and I kept trying to think to myself oh fuck is it aliens is it demons or is it some kind of supernatural creature and I didn't know what it was at first and I was trying to think why would this creature try to attack this character in this movie and why is it like torturing her and I didn't think of it at first wondering what was going on I was like making so many predictions in my head like okay uh it's definitely a brother like definitely a sibling or anything and i got it right <laughs> and but then it had to come to the other point like how was like how were they connected how were they how is she seeing what he's seeing because she sees in the movie uh what's going on and this creative look i loved in this film that doesn't give it away but it does give you clues to hint on what's going on like emily sees like all the killings happen this gabriel comes in and tries to kill him so clearly he's not an imaginary friend he's clearly some kind of supernatural ghost you would think you would predict thinking that he just started to like haunt her and try to have her carry out his evil deeds maybe and it kind of does show that with flashbacks of emily almost killing her mother's uh unborn child when it, when it was still in her stomach and telling her to kill other people as well which she tries to stop and refuse because she didn't want to do that and you see these moments where she is like in her house and then you see uh the cre the Cela Gabriel go around killing all the doctors that uh possibly have killed him in the past and you see Emily's stuck and cannot move like you see her in her house thinking that she is like uh going by her day-to-day -day life normally and she can't move like, as soon as she's, like, doing other stuff, you see her, she can't move, she can't do nothing. All she can do is watch Gabriel kill the doctors that wronged him in the past. And she could do nothing but just sit there 
and just witness the carnage happen. And it's very cool and creative how they transport her from her how from her house to the location where the murders are happening. I do love like everything is just collapsing around her and it starts forming back into a different location and in in this nice seamless uh cut of her being in one location to another and i'm guessing this clearly was probably done in a green screen background where they had to like get the actor and film her around a green screen like room and then cgi everything around her to make it look like she's in one location to another which i feel like that was pretty cool how they did that i loved uh what they did to get that shot right and i love all the creative stuff to show like she's in a different location in a different place like they show like the people who are going to get murdered they're in her house and then they show the gabriel also about to commit the act to kill them and then in her actual house until they finally switch it up to the other location where the murder is actually taking place. And there. And at first I thought like he was going to frame her for murder, but it doesn't happen. Like I thought it was going to happen immediately and everyone was going to be like, you're definitely the killer and she has to escape at like the second half of the movie, but she doesn't. It happens in the third act and you don't know why, but then you find out like the secret like location he's in, the secret place that she's in that uh, this Gabriel's in where he is like planning, committing his evil actions, his criminal acts. You find out that it was actually in Emily's basement the whole time the that he was hiding in her house the whole time this which becomes a shocking revelation and that's when she gets wrongfully accused for the murders that happened what i loved about this gabriel is that he decided like i need like a long trench coat like this long dramatic trench coat and i'm gonna use this uh Oh, this trophy award from the scientist I killed and use it as a blade to kill my enemies. And I was like, oh, and it looks so like it's looks so it is look silly. I would it, it kind of is silly how he moves around and how he looks so double jointed like he has no limbs in a way or bones like he's like again as i described kind of moving like the grudge girl and just like moving like just moving so weird and i loved it like i did love all the fights or all the not all the fights all the ways he kills people like he does it in such a dramatic fashion like they did the shot where they zoomed in on the blade and before it kills the victim like like close up on the on the on the victim like their eyes are widening and he's like sing, doo, doo, doo. and he's like oh shit and i was like so like and i just loved that kind of direction in horror it's like seeing like again like a slasher movie would do just zoom in on the blade have it like glint in the light and then stab the person i just love it and the way he stabs them is so brutal but it's more brutal when you see the aftermath in the aftermath you see like this dude like chunks of his face gone in his bed like absolute just like nothing left like he fucking carved him up and it's so beautiful. <laughs> that makes me sound so fucked up, but I just love gore in horror or in like, you know, movies like Kill Bill or, you know, Tarantino films or in general that would just go over the top, over beyond. Like, you, you know, with Kill Bill, with Tarantino or any Tarantino film in general, like the blood will just spray out like 
so much blood constantly sprayed out and somehow the person's not dead from losing that amount of blood or <laughs> just <laughs> just the head just coming out like a fountain of blood just like squirting out and everything like it's it didn't go to that level in this movie but it does go to the level of extremes of body parts getting chopped up and mangled to the point it's like oh my god i love this movie <laughs> but i'm getting ahead of myself when that happens because the kills are very tamed at the time like they're tamed but the execution it's not creative but how it was shot how it was directed how it was executed that was the exciting part of it that was the interesting part of it it didn't need to be a creative kill it was how it was beautifully shot that made it um, made it awesome to see and i enjoyed that especially like shots where it just looked like where the killer is hiding or having that one fight scene with the detective in the film and because <laughs> the detective has a gun and the killer has the blade and somehow the killer fucking beats him um, by disarming him smartly too as well as they're like fighting in this underground abandoned city and it reminded the underground abandoned city reminded me of the abandoned like structure and city that Gotham City had in Batman Arkham Knight the one where uh Batman finds like the secret underground city well not in Arkham Knight Arkham City sorry Arkham City because Batman finds like the secret like uh headquarters of the League of Shadows living in like an abandoned old Gotham that was built where new Gotham is like built on top of and it was like and it looked like that and I thought it was such a cool looking location and shot that the two like uh main characters were fighting uh with the detective and the killer Gabriel and it was seeing like that fight seeing like all that nice thick like fog that's like um that's only like stuck to the ground and then they're like just fighting in that nice cool foggy like looking place all damp and dank in the <laughs> in the um in the underground and i just loved it i just love the look of this movie the movie is beautifully is beautifully shot and it has a nice look to it I, I don't know how to describe it it looks not gothic it just has some kind of bluish kind of tint to it i think that makes it look so bright and colorful for a horror movie i mean it's dark but it does have color to it as more i can say to batman v superman looking all disgustingly puke colored I find myself laughing a lot in this movie. Just at small things, just like lines that are said in this movie or stuff that happens in the film that makes me laugh or just go, oh shit, this is cool. Like, I'm just like, if I was in that theater, everyone would have kicked me out because I was applauding, clapping, I was yelling like, oh damn, I was like so invested in this movie how over the top it was that it just got me hyped how how it was how it was filmed how it was being played out especially when we find out the twist of the movie that honestly i did predict it i mean as people say it's unpredictable i was going back and forth on myself thinking has to be a sibling and i was correct on that and i was thinking to myself like how are they uh how are they connected how is she seeing what he's seeing like how is she able to see all the things and you would think a supernatural element i was trying to think of something that could connect them and i was thinking instantly conjoined twins 
Like that was immediately what I was thinking, conjoined twins. And I was kind of right. Like I was kind of right what it meant to have a conjoined twin, but it was worse than that. Apparently Gabriel was a unfinished fetus that became more of a parasite <laughs> and Jesus Christ <laughs> that was insane but it doesn't explain how Gabriel got the powers but it was so funny how it was like the sis uh, Emily's sister was talking about like oh he, he like it, there's total, there's like psychics. There's like psychics. Like psychics are real. And even the cops are like, psychics are not real. And then <laughs> it turns out like the bro the the Gabriel, who is the brother, is basically a psychic. Cause he could control shit with not like not like like he controls electricity basically like manipulate the lights and everything or anything that's technology basically and i was like so shocked at one scene where there was a cop there was a security guard and you found that the security guard has a pacemaker and gabriel makes that pacemaker explode from inside him like jesus christ it wasn't that bloody but good god it still was so graphic to see and you find and when you find out that since the twin was like stuck to emily like it was this mangled disgusting looking creature that you would see in peter jackson's like old like horror campy movies you see like kind of looks like the creatures you would see in like i think what was it? Brain Dead or Dead Alive? I can't remember. The movie where there's the preacher that says, I kick ass for the Lord. I kick ass for the Lord. It looked like the... Was it the rat or no? It was the... Was it a rat or was it a monkey that started like a zombie infection? I can't remember. But it reminded me of that because the way it looked, how deformed it was. It was, like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> it was so weird. Like, this movie was, like, not trying to make it look uh, that horrifying. But it was also trying to make it horrifying, but also silly at the same time. But also trying to keep it in the horror uh like the horror like path the horror uh, uh level that it's supposed to be but try to be campy at the same time which i like it's keeping the horror it's not supposed to scare you but it's supposed to have those horrific moments those e those like disgusting moments that can make you uh cringe at the sight of it, like, oh god, I did not need to see that kind of thing. But for me, I watched every single moment of it. I mean, at first, it was like, I was gonna get scared, like, oh god, are they gonna do a jump scare on me? And I was waiting for one, but usually the jump scares I like, they're more subtle. And even though the jump scares didn't give me a scare, they were very subtle. They were very, like, well handled. It wasn't trying to, like, do the whole, like, oh, let's do the farouche sound effect. And then see, like, the the killer come out of nowhere, like, damn, like that. No, <laughs> it's even better, like, when she's seeing the kill, like, when Emily's seeing the kills happen, the killer always does pass by her. It, he always passes by her in the, when she's seeing the kill, or he's, like, climbing on the bed beside her and she's like so terrified you could feel like her getting scared like pissing her pants basically like having like gabriel climb over her on the bed uh, about to kill this one dude that is sleeping and is she's and he's like doing it slowly like she is like seeing the jacket go 
on top of her face, touching her, and she, you see like those bulging eyes that you saw like in the movie posters of Malignant, where she's all like terrified as fuck seeing <laughs> this shit happen. <laughs> I just love that it kind of builds the tension of like oh god what's gonna happen oh god how is she gonna stop it but except for one kill which happened in the bathroom where the killer like when Gabriel is like actually behind her which I would never expect to say like oh it's symbolic because he used to be behind her back when he was uh, attached to her and then he's like he just does a little comedic slide like a like uh you know the cha-cha slide kind of thing slide to the left slide to the right with the knife with the blade in his back like i just felt like there should have been a sound effect where the killer's like boop <laughs> and he slides away like hey what's up <laughs> before killing the dude <laughs> and i I I just loved it. He just did a little comedic slide like he's having fun with it. Like, oh no, where's Gabriel? Here I am. <laughs> so yeah, it's revealed that Gabriel was awakened because of her douchebag uh, husband was all like, yeah, she awakened her because he slammed her against the wall and she hit the back of her head. That means Gabriel has awakened. Like, even though they cut up th everything about Gabriel, they, since Gabriel was still attached to her brain, he can, like, get out of the brain. Like, the skull opens from the back of her head in this one jail scene. And I just started laughing, thinking, like, oh, my God, it's going to be, like, that Ghost Rider scene where Nicolas Cage is like surrounded by sinners because they're all prisoners except for the one kid who was innocent and it kind of felt it kind of did played like that where uh Ghost Rider does awaken in the jail cell and all the criminals are like fucking scared out of their minds and then one of the kids who was innocent, he was scared, but Ghost Rider was like, don't worry, you're innocent, kid. I saw through your soul. You, you're pure. Innocent. Uh, but... None of these girls are pure. In fact, all these girls looked so comedically dressed. Like there's this one black woman, she has like an afro and she's dressed like she's gonna go to Studio 51 with her disco uh, attire on. <laughs> no jive turkey. <laughs> you just call me a jive turkey. <laughs> she looked like Beyonce from a uh, gold member. Uh, Austin Powers, a gold member. <laughs> and she... Up yours, job, turkey. <laughs> and then there's like Zoe Bell. And if you don't know who Zoe Bell is, she's done a lot of stunt work for Quentin Tarantino's movies and other films as well, like Xena Warrior Princess. Zoe Bell's in it too as this generic looking biker gang chick <laughs> like they're like everyone was a cliche character from a different movie in that jail cell full of women like everyone was a cliche character like they weren't from a fucking movie they were like in a they look like the background characters you see in a lot of G Grand Theft Auto games. <laughs> they just like looked over and they just saw Emily right there. They're like, we're going to fuck this bitch up. And Zoe Bell tries to fight her. And then she's like, and then Emily's like, and then as soon as they like kick the shit out of her and she's like coughing blood, it awakens Gabriel and you can see like the skull opening at the back of his head and he's like angry and he just murders everyone and it's amazing like broken bones, snapped neck, face, heads crushed in by the bottom of her fucking shoe. <laughs> it's like you can see the eyeball like 
like bulging out as soon as like the head got smashed into the ground and blood splattering everywhere and you can see uh and all the other girls like you see their bones like breaking out of their fucking like arms all of them are just getting demolished by Gabriel in this and it's the best fight because it looks like because since Gabriel's on the back of her head of course the body has to move like it's backwards and the bones are like snapping in place to accommodate him and he looks like he's walking backwards <laughs> and it's so silly because when you see him fighting when you see Gabriel killing people and fighting you see the back of Emily's head just like like her eyes closed just dead face just like she, like she's like sleeping and she doesn't even know that the killings are happening and once Gabriel escapes once he does escape and just smashes a cop's head in in the jail cell bars until he finally grabs the key gets his fucking coat gets his blade he just kills all of the cops in in the fucking precinct he just kills every cop in there all the cops have guns and gabriel's like dodging it like he's like he's fucking neo from the matrix and he's just like going around slicing guys up slice the dude's whole entire fucking arm off and it was shot and i said this because i say that I, when i said that the all the directioning styles that James Wan took from Aquaman, it does come to play in this police fight scene in the third act. Like you could see the directioning style, the way the camera's moving, the way it's shot, all like the like the turning angles of the camera like moving like around like the set. And you see like all the fights, the gore happening. Like it looks like this, uh, one shot take of a gory bloodbath fight scene happening and it's just amazing i freaking love this as 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 and the detectives they get sliced up but they didn't get killed they were fine i'm not sure about the detective since he got stabbed through the fucking like shoulder blade uh, at the end of the movie, so you have no idea if that dude is dead or not. He's just down on the ground. God knows what happened to him. And all this happening, you can see the back of Emily's head. And it does kind of look fake. Because it just looks like a stunt person, like, wearing, like, the jacket. Looking like he's the dude from Sinister or something with the long hair. But it looks like a woman's face is on the back of his head. <laughs> it just looks so weird. It looks so silly. But I loved it. Because <laughs> I feel like that was the point. It was supposed to be like a Sam Raimi uh, horror movie. Like, it's supposed to be campy. It's supposed to have... Uh, practical effects and for modern day S Sam Raimi movies a mixture of practical and CGI and and it does do blend that perfectly it does remind me a lot of the things that happened in Drag Me to Hell because Drag Me to Hell all the actors are playing it like it is a horror movie but everything that's happening around them feels so silly and campy but it still tries to be a horror movie. It still tries to have those horror elements to make it look terrifying. And they succeed on that. And I think Drag Me to Hell does have those moments where it does succeed on that too to make things look terrifying, but also silly and campy as well. And I love that. And <laughs> this movie does so well with what it does with its, uh, with its horror. And James Wan's right, probably, because he hasn't done campy horror before. Because he didn't try to... Like, I like he didn't say it's a movie you never seen before. He said it's a movie you never seen from him before. Which is kind of correct, because the Saw movies 
even though he's only directed like one, correct? Uh, he he only like it's always been straightforward horror. Like Dead Silence could have been a movie that would have benefited to a campier tone, but it sadly didn't, and it was just this terrible generic horror movie that kind of ended the same way like the saw movies like the realization scene about like oh yeah everything was a lie and i haven't stopped anything i everything is still and then people die at the end it kind of like dead silence could have benefited for being a campy horror film it could have the way like its whole style about creepy puppets and such, it could have benefited from that, but it didn't. And I think that's why I can admire James Wan, is that I guess James Wan was tired of all the same kind of things he was doing with horror movies. And I guess I guess he wanted to challenge himself, like how he had to challenge himself when he did a Fast and Furious movie, or how he wanted the challenge of directing an Aquaman movie and making it actually pretty good. Like, that's what I love about James Wan. He wants to challenge himself on things he wants to do differently. Not try to, like, do everything the same way that's been done before. He wants to do something different and do something new, or else he's just going to get bored of it and his movies are going to get stale. And he does great. He says that it's best to take risk. Because if you don't take risk, it's just not going to feel like challenging anymore. It's not going to feel interesting. Like, and I like that. Because he, because a lot of movies I've seen from Hit and Miss, I never liked the Insidious movies. Never liked the Conjuring movies either. I just thought they were terrible. I just didn't care for them. The Saw movies for me are that hit and miss quality, but I do kind of enjoy them here and there if they're enjoyable for me to watch at least, but they're just dumb fun. Uh, James Wan, man, he did great with this. <laughs> I, I, he did return to form, like, because he only been directing movies that weren't horror for a while, like... I really thought he was going to do the Mortal Kombat movie because wasn't he originally planned to direct the Mortal Kombat movie? Like, I really wish he did direct that, but sadly he didn't. He just, you know, gave it to someone else because I feel like James Wong would have made a pretty cool uh, Mortal Kombat movie if he directed it. Maybe if he directed the sequel, that would be awesome if he did. <laughs> but yeah, Malignant, I give it... Hmm, that's a pretty good question. What do I give it? It's like, is it? does it have rewatchability? I say it does just for the sake of seeing like the hints and clues early on in the film to see that if you can guess where they showed the answer to the twist at the middle of the movie, uh, even though I people say it's unpredictable, it kind of is, but at the same time, I actually guessed it correctly where I locked in a final answer like it's brother and I'm betting because they're psychic, it's because they're conjoined twins. Like, I did predict it, but I was, like, trying to guess. I did second-guess myself, like, maybe it's not it. Because it was, like, a lot of guesses. Like, is it aliens? Is it demons? Is it uh, something? And I was trying to think, what could be over the top that isn't aliens? Like, the stupid film. Uh, what was the film with uh, Julianne Moore where she lost her son and... She was, and everyone's telling her, like, her son doesn't exist. Your son doesn't, you never had a son. I don't remember. Is it called Knowing? And the weird thing was that it was freaking aliens that took her son because they wanted to test uh, 
how good how good a mother is that their their maternal instincts how strong they are i think i don't remember <laughs> but i'm honestly glad it wasn't aliens that would have been stupid but this was crazy this was insane and i loved it i enjoyed it so good i'm happy i watched it i had doubts i had so much because i saw the trailers for that movie and i was like thinking i'm not interested and i saw james wan's name and i was like maybe i'll watch it because you know i missed out on candy man so i want a horror movie i will watch on day one and actually see it and i'm glad i did <laughs> but you know i give this 7.6 out of 10 yeah, seven seven point six out of ten. It's 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 there. It's there. I mean, I had like some issues with the beginning at first where I mean not the intro. The intro is amazing. I'm just talking about the beginning where we actually see our main character is when I started having doubts, thinking like, oh god, this is gonna be bad, isn't it? Cause I was immediately think of thinking of insidious and i was like oh god is it gonna be like that but thank god it wasn't <laughs> so i'm happy so 7.6 i did enjoy this 7.6 it's not like the best uh movie but it's honestly the most entertaining i say a 7.6 out of 10 like 10 out of 10 for me is like rewatchability this is more like I will rewatch it if I if I'm in the mood like oh my god I want to see something silly or campy again. I would definitely double feature this with Drag Me to Hell. Like that would be a great double feature. Watch Drag Me to Hell and Malignant. That would be amazing. <laughs> so anyway, thank you guys for watching. What do you think of this movie? Did you like it? Did you enjoy it? Are you planning to see it because you probably watched this video doubting that this movie has any value whatsoever are you disappointed it's not a full-on horror movie that will scare you and shit your pants and make you have nightmares i mean it is scary to think like if you had a sadistic twin that shared the same mind as you and started to use you as a puppet to kill you to kill things it's like having a split personality kind of which is scary and i i think it is that horror element of it i would totally be scared if that happened uh if there ever was like those moments where it, if i did have like a twin that was attached to me and then made me go on a murderous rampage, I would be scared of that. That would terrify the hell out of me. But thank you guys for watching. If you like this, cool. And I'll see you, Wolfpack, in the next one, where I will review the movie Kate, starring Mary Elizabeth Winstead, Ramona Flowers herself. See you again, Wolfpack. Ciao, darlings. Remember, you are loved.